Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about Star Wars Celebration 2022, the future of the Mandoverse and so much more. But before that my dear friends we have a big update for Star Wars Ahsoka. Peter Ramsey, who co-directed Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, is confirmed to be directing at least one episode of the Ahsoka series. Just yesterday, I predicted that with filming on the show starting later this month, we're going to be hearing a lot more updates and rumours in the coming weeks. Well, it seems as though things are already getting going. Now, The Hollywood Reporter notes that the episode count and additional directors have not been revealed, although the showrunner Dave Filoni is expected to direct at least a few. Lucasfilm have not commented on this update. Now, Ramsey has been inching his way towards live action after first making a name for himself as a storyboard artist on movies like Fight Club and Men in Black, and then in animation, where he made his feature directing debut with DreamWorks Animation's 2012 Rise of the Guardians. His co-directing work on 2018's Into the Spider-Verse helped to make the movie a pinnacle in the animation field. And since then, he set up two live action feature projects, including Blood Count, a period vampire thriller, and Love in Vain, a biopic centering on blues pioneer Robert Johnson. His involvement in the Ahsoka series is really anticipated as his talents are well recognised in the industry. And personally, my dear Meglorians, I think he's the perfect man for the job. The tone and the genre of Ahsoka is going to be much different to that of The Mandalorian, which is a space western. Ahsoka will naturally be a more dramatic series, maybe even incorporating fantasy elements surrounding the Force. All we know so far is that her and Sabine Wren are searching for Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ezra Bridger. And we've all had fan theories as to what the show is going to include. I'll keep you guys updated on more Ahsoka news. But now, my dear friends, let's talk about some updates for the Mandoverse. So over the last few days, I've been talking a lot about Star Wars Celebration in May, and StarWars.com have been releasing a lot of announcements. In yesterday's video, we covered the Bad Batch panel that's going to feature the creatives and actors from the show. And before that, we spoke about the live action panel that's going to be for Andor, the Kenobi series, and the Mandalorian. But one separate panel that was announced that we really need to talk about is called Mando Plus. This is going to be a special unique panel hosted by Dave Filoni and John Favreau, arguably the most beloved creators at Lucasfilm right now, and following this announcement, there have been some really interesting reports that followed. So, StarWars.com say that this panel, called Mando Plus, will be a conversation with Favreau and Filoni, along with special guests for a look back and a look ahead at what's to come, and this is all in reference to the Mandoverse. Now, this panel is no doubt going to give us details for The Mandalorian Season 3 and the Ahsoka series, but the name of it implies that there's going to be much more. We've spoken about just how big the Mandoverse is probably going to be, and how there are probably going to be way more spin-offs to come, not just the Book of Boba Fett and Ahsoka, and I think this panel at Star Wars Celebration is going to give fans some insight into what's further down the road in the Mandalorian story. I suspect we might even get an update on the shelved project, Rangers of the New Republic, which Kathleen Kennedy hinted was still in the works, but it's on the back burner. And without Gina Carano, I suspect the plot is going to be changed, and we're going to have a new protagonist. Now, the emphasis on Mando Plus sounds to me like Filoni and Favreau will give us some sort of roadmap for where the Mandalorian and its spin-off shows will lead over the next few years, maybe even accumulating into a cinematic release that will mark the end of the so-called first phase of the Mandalorian universe. This is all just speculation, but it seems like that's what they're trying to do, and I imagine that apart from giving us a tease for the Mandalorian Season 3, they're probably also going to mention the Book of Boba Fett, and we might even find out if there's going to be a second season. I've said it many times on the channel, whatever you thought of the Book of Boba Fett, season 1 had so much potential, and it does deserve a second season. What that could be, I do not know, but there are so many possibilities. I imagine now the Pikes are dealt with, a bigger crime syndicate, maybe even the remnants of Crimson Dawn, could see the opportunity in the power vacuum, and they could be Boba's adversaries in that second season. I think Favreau and Filoni's plan for the Mandoverse is bigger than we realise. We've heard rumours that there's going to be more than just these series, there was one report of a Bo-Katan show, or maybe even a Thrawn series, once the current Slater projects have finished. In either case, I'm aching to see how they continue the story of our heroes, and how what we call the Mandalorian universe is expanding. One question many people have is what is the ultimate plan for these shows? Are they going to take us all the way up to the rise of the First Order just before the sequel trilogy, or are they going to stick with these few years after Return of the Jedi? I think Chapter 12 The Siege from Season 2 gave us our answer, that they are going to set up that rise. I guess we'll find out soon enough though. But my main point is, 
this panel is super exciting. We just don't know what's going to be revealed. And look, I'll be happy with a simple release date for The Mandalorian Season 3 and nothing else. But the fact that they're calling it Mando Plus implies there's going to be much more revealed. Now, we don't know if any of these panels are going to be public, but information and leaks get out really quickly. And the reason I have such high hopes for this panel to do with The Mandalorian is because we know how successful it's been on Disney Plus. It has over 14 billion, with a capital B, minutes watched. So I'm not going to be surprised if they pull out all of the stops and amaze fans with whatever they announce. As always, this is the way. And so my dear friends, we have an update for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Some more information has emerged, courtesy of MakingStarWars.net. If you think back to a couple of months ago, they confirmed that Qui-Gon Jinn is going to be in this series, both as a Force voice and a physical apparition as a Force ghost. Well, now they've provided some more information, and this is really huge. Major spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to be spoiled, this is where you should turn away. But if not, Let's get straight into the nitty gritty. So the topic at hand is what does Qui-Gon have to say in Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi? So they start by setting the scene. Liam Neeson's Qui-Gon Jinn first appears to Obi-Wan as a voice during the lightsaber duel with Darth Vader, and they're talking about the second of the two fights. The voice coaches and inspires Kenobi to prevail during that battle. But this is just the voice. We don't see him, we hear him. And then in chapter six, which is the final episode of the series, after all is said and done, the blue ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn does manifest for Obi-Wan. And this is back at the cave in the final scenes of the show. As Qui-Gon appears in front of Kenobi, Obi-Wan looks on in amazement, hardly able to believe his own eyes, and asks his former master what took him so long. And then Qui-Gon wholesomely says he's been there with him this entire time. A really lovely moment, especially for prequels fans. And overall, it's a really nice message. Obi-Wan's depression made him feel isolated and alone, but he really wasn't. Obi-Wan just could not see the hope after the Clone Wars. So that is all they reveal, and I'm sure we all can't wait to see Qui-Gon Jinn in the flesh as a Force ghost. I know this is going to bring up a lot of questions about how Qui-Gon is able to do this, since he never fully completed the training to become one while he was alive. But George Lucas always said he might have completed this in the netherworld of the Force. And it seems like he canonically did so, because we're going to see him in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Let me know your thoughts of this in the comments down below. And with that said, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave me a big fat thumbs up, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and if you want to support the channel, make sure to check out my Patreon page down below. You also get access to videos that are not found here on YouTube. But until the next one, guys, may the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.